You are listening to Chapter 7 of the novel, An Understated Dominance by Whom. Following as the content, Ethan looked at Whaley's leaving figure, turned around and glared at the tall, thin man, then coldly said, All you can do is talk nonsense. Whaley walked out of the restaurant, his assistant driver was waiting on the side of the road, he went over but did not sit in the car but stood against the car's body, pulled out a pack of cigarettes from his pocket, lit a cigarette and smoked. Smoke floated around, his eyes were also immersed in it. After the meal ended, Brinley and his parents walked out of the restaurant. As soon as they reached the door, they encountered a tall man standing on the side of the road. Even though it was dark, he still looked very eye-catching. Brinley's hand suddenly clenched, seeing him again. After that evening, the person she didn't want to meet the most was him. She didn't want him to see her miserable appearance after he left her. She turned her face away as if nothing had happened, as if she hadn't seen him. But Mr. and Mrs. Selick both saw it, then walked straight towards Whaley without hesitation. Brinley frowned slightly but could only silently follow behind. Mr. Selick walked forward, smiled and said, Whaley, long time no see. Whaley slowly looked towards Mr. Selick, extinguished his cigarette, stood up straight, smiled gently and greeted back. I met you at a party before, but didn't have a chance to say hello to you. I didn't expect to see you here. Mr. Selick said, as if remembering something, turned around and pushed Brinley and said, That's right, Brinley is back. This girl always said she wanted to find a chance to visit you. Being suddenly pushed forward, Brinley was a bit surprised, then heard her father say that sentence. After hearing that, she just wanted to apparate. She just wanted to never see Whaley again in her whole life. How could she possibly want to come to his house to visit him? She will never repeat humiliating herself. Only then did Whaley look at Brinley. He lowered his eyes and looked at her arrogantly. She could clearly feel the disdain flashing in his eyes. Brinley's hands clenched into fists. In his heart, perhaps she has become a thick-faced woman again, having been abandoned but still trying to follow? Whaley's face was expressionless, his eyes were also extremely calm. It was as if he hadn't heard what Mr. Selick said. He just slowly replied, I still have something to do, so I'll go first. After speaking, he pulled open the car door, bent down to sit inside, and the car quickly drove away. Whaley completely ignored Brinley like that. Mr. and Mrs. Selick's faces also became a bit unsightly, and most of them were regretful. After sitting in the car, Mr. Selick kept sighing and said, I originally thought that Whaley would respect his previous love and pay a little attention to Brinley, but now it seems that he doesn't have any lingering feelings about his old love at all. Questioning old love? So there must be an old love in order to be entangled. Whaley almost never had feelings for her, so where did he get his love from? Brinley turned his head to look out of the car, saying nothing. Mrs. Selick also sighed, then looked at Brinley and said, It's okay, Director Chaplin is good, our Brinley will be happy in the future. Brinley stayed abroad for three years, in addition to studying, he also worked at a newspaper office. This time she returned home because she asked for leave, but this morning she received an email from her superior, asking if she was interested in interviewing Yolanda, a hot figure in the country. To be honest, in addition to not wanting to meet Whaley, she also did not want to interact with anyone related to Whaley, especially Whaley's scandalous girlfriend. But, she pondered for a moment, moved her fingers, typed out a few words. Don't ask if you're interested, just talk about money. Their newspaper editorial office, in order to promote the positivity of its employees, in addition to the basic salary, also has bonuses. For example, Whoever has hot, valuable news will receive a corresponding bonus. Respond. The other side quickly replied with a number. The bonus is thick, it's true that famous female stars are different. I agree. Turning off the computer, Brinley took advantage of his network of contacts to find Yolanda's personal phone number, so he called. Because after Yolanda became famous, she refused to accept any interviews from any newspaper, Brinley thought she would have to put in a lot of effort, 
But she didn't expect that after she made the call, she would only introduce her identity and then the party would be there. The other happily accepted, and arranged a time. After hanging up the phone, Brinley was still a bit stunned. Is this too convenient? So is she the type to have a black love affair or something? The interview time is scheduled for noon the next day. Yolanda had a live broadcast on the TV station that day, and could only give her 10 minutes, so she had to arrive at the TV station 30 minutes early and sit in the VIP waiting room waiting for her. She sat on the sofa, flipping through domestic magazines, learning about current domestic information. After a while, the waiting room door was suddenly pushed open, she immediately closed the magazine, adjusted her clothes and stood up. She originally thought it was Yolanda coming in, but she didn't expect that what caught her eye was that handsome man. Brinley was stunned, his pupils slightly constricted. Whaley didn't seem to expect to see her here, his steps slowed down a bit, and a second later, his eyes darkened. The waiting room suddenly became terrifyingly quiet, even the atmosphere became frozen. A few seconds later, Brinley regained consciousness, moved her mouth, intending to explain something, but the pressure was too great, leaving her speechless for a moment. Anyway, Whaley only sees her as air, will quickly turn around and leave, it doesn't matter whether she speaks or not. Unexpectedly, he stared at her, then walked step by step towards her. Brinley's heart beat faster as he was pressed close by the man. Her legs kept moving backwards. But behind the sofa, she couldn't run anywhere anymore. She took a deep breath, tried to suppress her fear and was about to say something. But as soon as the words came out of her throat, Whaley stepped closer to her. She only felt her wrists being tightened, her whole body pressed against Whaley. His muscular body covered her entire body. Brinley. Whaley spoke up, his calm tone filled with ice. As soon as I returned home, he appeared in front of me. Once, twice, three times, are you that impatient? This was his first sentence to her after they met again. Even though they had met by chance several times before, he always considered her to be heir. Not even bothering to look at her. She also didn't expect that the first words he said to her were still so cold and full of ridicule. Did you find Chapter 7 interesting? If you like the next development of this story, please subscribe to the channel to be the first to watch Chapter 8.